my FBC kid friends, my elementary awesomenesses. You guys are awesomenesses. You're part of my team, part of my tribe. And kind of that leads us into this week's lesson number three. One, two, three. Lesson number three of our legacy series. And we're going to be talking all about how the Holy Spirit helps us to do God's good work. God's good work. And so uh, we're going to be doing that. But first, let's do first things first, shall we? Let's go with him with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we love you. And uh, Lord, we just want to be your hands and feet here on earth, Lord. Uh, uh, give us direction. Give us purpose. Uh, help us to do your good work. And in Jesus' mighty name, all the powerful people at NPC Kids said, Amen. 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 Whoa, we're going to give the devil. Oh, yeah. He's going down. The devil's going down. That's right. Anyway, I'm so glad that you guys are here. And we should probably get started. Shall we? Yep. I think we shall. I have to ask you kind of an important question. Um, is there anything that you do that you have to do with somebody else that you can't do it without their help? Uh, you can't, you have to, you know, you, uh, you uh, can't do it all alone. Well, you know, some of us are now playing in sports, uh, playing baseball, and some of us are, you know, on the volleyball teams. And some of us are doing like some really cool stuff. What about working on a project uh, at school as we're getting toward, close to the end of the year? You know, when you when you work on on projects, there's all kinds of people, especially when you're working with a group. You can't do that stuff by yourself. It's all about being part of a team, and it's really important that we that we come together with other Christians so that we can get God's good work. Done. Amen. Can I get a capiche? That's right. Capiche. Okay. So, did you know that Jesus had his own team? They were called disciples. He had like 12 of them that like hung around with him and they were like his running buddies and, and they did like cool stuff with him and they learned from him and they, they watched him heal and do all kinds of cool things. But one of those uh, disciples, his name was Judas. And if you remember in some of our Easter lessons, Judas actually turned in Jesus and he had Jesus arrested. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my sword. But guess what? I got now a new electronic sword. Woo! I'm so happy. But let's go to our... And if you're following along, you can read from Acts 1 verses 15 through uh, 15 and 16. So it says... In those days, Peter stood among, up among the believers, a group numbering about 120. That's a big, big team. The believers, those were people that were uh, people that uh, followed Jesus wherever he went. And uh, now, you know, Jesus had passed away. So it was a pretty dark, difficult time for Jesus' team. And then it goes on to say uh, in uh, 16, and said, so Peter stood up amongst the believers and he said, brothers and sisters, the scripture had to be fulfilled in which the Holy Spirit, everybody say Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit spoke long ago through David. We're talking about King David. And this is like years and years, like 500 years earlier. I mean, this is like early, early. The Holy Spirit spoke through King David concerning Judas, it goes on to say, who served as a guide for those who arrested Jesus. You know what? This was God's plan all along. He knew that he was sending his son down to be crucified, but in order for that to happen, he had to get Judas to arrest Jesus, or not arrest Jesus, but to guide the people who would arrest Jesus so he could be crucified. But guess what? Judas was part of the team. 
And so as we go on, as the story goes on, you know, Peter stood up and said, hey, we need to replace Judas. He's not coming back. He, he's gone. He's done. And so they had to replace, well, they replaced Judas. And so what they ended up doing is they ended up casting lots. Now, casting lots is kind of like rolling dice, like when you're playing Monopoly. Um, but it's like kind of like sticks and bones and whoever has the highest score kind of is the guy because the Holy Spirit is speaking through that and uh, like it is pretty awesome. Now, keep in mind through this whole process uh, two guys came to the surface. It was Matthias and it was Justus. I love that name but you know what in order for them to come and the Holy Spirit to speak they had to again cast lots so that they would get the uh, power of the Holy Spirit in this decision. They prayed, they cast lots, they were really trusting on the Holy Spirit to bring them the right guy. And so guess what? Matthias was the guy that was chosen. The Holy Spirit chose Matthias. But does that mean that Justice was not part of the team any longer? Does it mean that he got fired? Did it mean, no, he's still part of the team. And they, they, they continued and were, went on to go ahead and bring God's good word. Amen? Amen. So now, let's fast forward to our time. We don't have to cast lots. We do have to pray. It's important that we move forward by inviting the Holy Spirit into our everything, conversations, decisions, uh, into our emotional, into handling our emotions, whether it be positive or negative. The Holy Spirit should be a major part of our life. But we don't have to, to cast lots um, like they did back in the old days. Because of Jesus' legacy, because he died on the cross, we can go directly to the Holy Spirit, who can give us guidance, who can give us help. We're able to pray directly to them, to him, and um, we're able to, he's able to help us with with those decisions that I, that I just finished talking about. And it, you are now part of an amazing team, part of Jesus' team. This is like super, super, super good news for those of us who are Christians. Now, I'm gonna go back to my sword. I'm gonna go back to my Bible uh, one more time. And it's going, if you're following along, I'd like for you to follow along on 1 John 5, verses 9 through 13. And it says, we, expect, we accept human testimony. And what is a testimony? A testimony is basically a story of, of truth. Um, but it's not always true. I mean, when you're starting to watch reality TV, um, you know, when you're, you're, some of the things that we see on news, it's not always true. So we accept human testimony, but God's testimony is greater because it is the testimony of God. Who do you think we should trust? Do you think we should trust man or should we trust God? I know for myself, I'm going to trust God. It goes on to say, which he has given about his son. God himself has given us, his creations, a testimony about his son. And verse 10. Whoever believes in his son of the son of God accepts this testimony. I know I do. Whoever does not believe God has made him out to be a liar. I am not going there. I basically, if you don't believe in Jesus, you're basically calling God a liar. I no, 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 no. Um because they have not believed the testimony God has given about his son. And then it says in verse 11, and this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life. Eternal means like forever, you and me hanging out in heaven, eternal life. Uh, and this life is in his son. As long as you believe in Jesus, you and I will be hanging out in heaven together forever, eternal. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. Kids, there's, it's either one way or another. You either believe or you don't believe. You can't be halfway. You can't live uh, a godly, biblical 
life believing in in Jesus um, and you know it, it if you if you believe in God if you believe in Jesus Christ you believe he's the son all done all through we're good we're good I hope that you're you're good so yeah I'm I, I know I can count on you and it says in 13 I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may have that you have eternal life kids that is awesome I really um, I'm really counting on you and I moving together with the Holy Spirit to guide our lives so that we can both have a testimony about do we believe Jesus God's testimony about his son Jesus and guess what the changes that God has done in my life the changes that I know he's doing in your life and all the things he's going to do in your life we can't help but tell other people make more disciples for God <sighs> Jesus I want to do good work for you. Amen? Amen. Kids, it's good to see you. I can't wait to see you on Sunday. Please come in. We have the 930 service. Uh, we have kinder through fifth grade. We got some really cool stuff. We're giving away a drone for anybody who brings the most new friends. Uh, we're doing giving a, a Bluetooth speaker for somebody who uh, can decorate a really cool hat that we gave you at the first part. And we're also going to be giving a really cool gift at the end of this um, sermon series. So I don't want you to miss out on any of that. I hope to see you really soon. And for right now, it is time to say <coughs> adios. Adios, my friends. Adios.